Okay, question then. Go ahead. So she said when, when she tried to do book distribution, did you actually do book distribution or did you try to do book distribution? Okay, so there's a big difference, at least in my vocabulary. There's a difference between trying and doing. So you did book distribution during the month of September and you found that Indians were very interested. And when the Indian person sees a woman in the hallway distributing books, they feel empathy and they want to help out. Even if they don't want to, they'll buy it. Okay. Yes. They were inviting them in into the doors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's good, right? <laughs> Why are we going on book distribution? What's our prime directive? No? What's our prime directive? Okay, we're going to start the whole seminar over again. <laughs> the first, our prime directive is? To leave everyone with a good impression, right? And why are we going on book distribution? To sell lots of books? Are we going out to sell a lot of books? Or for? We're going out for purification. So was it good for you? Did you get purified? That's good. These are good emotions coming out of you. So you felt compassion for the fallen souls, right? I'm, I disagree. I think it did help you. The, Was Prabhupada instantly successful? When he came to America, did, did he have an instant success or did he struggle? Did he struggle? Struggle's good. Struggle hard, it's really good for you. And, and have compassion for others. Some, some, some days will be better than others, some sankirtan spots are better than others, but it, we're not out there for, for the result. We, we go out and we do our duty wherever we are. If, if it turns out consistently that a place is not very good, then you move on. And a lot of times, it's just a matter of adjusting your technique. Uh, it happens that we worked Walmarts, and we did tens of thousands of books at Walmarts. It can be done. I'll talk about that a little bit. I'll tell some techniques next, things that you can employ. But sometimes... We've had circumstances once uh, the San Francisco airport, it was legal, it was open, we could go there to distribute books, and there was a rumor that it was a terrible place. Somebody had gone there and had a bad experience and said, this is horrible, no one will ever take a book. So for years, nobody went there. And then my friend Banabhata Prabhu, he said, well, I'm going to go try it. No one had done it for 10 years. So he went there, he came back home with a big smile on his face. He said, how'd you do? And he said, oh, I distributed about 120 books. He, he had raised donations of about $800. And from then on, we went every day. <laughs> Didn't we go every day in Irkula? Yes, I did, for 13 years, right after that. So uh, sometimes, you know, it's like if you land on a planet and they just happen to drop you in the Arizona desert, you might think that the whole planet's a desert. Or, but, or because you don't know the technique of that particular place, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not good. So it's a matter of honing your skills and finding out the, the key, you know, how to do it in a particular place. And in the process of finding that out, you'll grow, and you'll become well-rounded. 
And if, and if there's a particular place that doesn't work really well that you don't like, then you can gravitate to other places. But I do think it is a good idea to try all kinds of different venues because it makes you well-rounded. When we first started our program in, in San Jose, we did Indian stores, and it was very successful. It was huge. And then I told the devotees, you've got to move on. You can't just keep doing Indian stores for the rest of your life and talking to Indians. <laughs> And they did, and they're happy. And now they know how to do all kinds of things. They go, I mean, we've done Walmarts, we do door-to-door, we do shows and all kinds of things. And the devotees are becoming expert. And they've met all kinds of obstacles. You know, at first they were shocked. They'd go and somebody would say, I'm an atheist, go away, or something like that. And they were like, what do I do? And it, like, nothing, just learn how the, <laughs> this is how the material energy works. We're going out for our purification. Something. Yes. Yes, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, don't preach this message to those who aren't, aren't devoted or austere. And so when we're meeting people, we qualify each one of them to see if they're devoted or austere. That's the reason we ask for a donation. We don't need the money, but when we ask for a donation, if someone gives a donation, that's an austerity. And when they do that austerity of giving some donation, then they're able to accept and appreciate the book. And some people, if they don't have money but they really want the book, they pay attention. And they've donated their valuable time by stopping and talking to you and showing some sincere interest. That's devotion and that's austerity. So they're able to take it from there. So we go, as preachers, we have to go from one person to the next and find out the best way we can engage them in Christian service. And, by, and some people, the best way to engage them is to leave them alone. Let them have their space. You know, because people don't... If they're not interested and they don't want to be talked to, what's our prime directive? And do you leave a good impression by following them down the street and badgering them all the way? Does that leave a good impression? Not really. So you, if, you, if you want to leave a good impression and somebody doesn't want to be talked to, they don't want to be bothered, what do you do? Give them a smile and a nod, and, and they'll remember you. I had a couple, I'll tell this story for the thousandth time because it's such an exemplary story I met a couple on Waikiki Beach and I showed them the books and they said no thank you we're Christians we don't want to donate we don't want anything to do with these books anyway please you know and I said in a very warm hearted way because I was feeling that way I said I want to thank you for taking your valuable time it's okay and, and it was just an honor to meet you whether you take them or not and they walked away and came back and half an hour later and they said, we changed our mind. We'd like to donate. <laughs> they were affected by that. So whether they take a book or not take a book, the point is that we're engaging them in service and we leave everyone a good impression. And if you just do that, don't worry about your personal scores or results or how it's going. Leave everyone a good impression. You'll find the energy will come to you. And sometimes you'll start off and you'll, the first hour things seem like harder than they were yesterday. That's why book distribution, you start over clean slate every day. There's no guarantee that things are going to go well. And therefore, your sadhana must be? Yeah, it's a serious business we're doing here. And it, it, this is why it makes you strong in devotional service. You're going out every day, renewing yourself. You have to be hungry and humble. And you, you have to you know, bring all the instructions of Bhagavad Gita to bear that are in the twelfth chapter. What are the qualities of, of, that Krishna says that, that he admires in devotees, that he loves in the devotees? You have to learn those and apply those when you go in Sankirtan. Isn't it? So that's why this is a high sadhana. Any other questions? All right, here we go. Are you all comfortable? Are you ready to move on a little more? Can we, can we do more? All right. Okay, here's some steps uh, in distributing a book. And there, there are variations of this. There are people who do it differently from this. But here are a few ideas that may help you. Prabhuji, could you read them aloud again, please? Okay, 
So radar. Are you aware that you have a built-in radar in your... Scary, right? That's a mechanical tool, but you actually have that built in to yourself. And you can find out when you come across people anywhere of how fast they're going, what their presence of mind is, what their distance is, how far away they are from you. You want to learn how to do it? Yes. Okay, hold up your hand. There's a power that emanates from the palm of your hand, it's, and it's like a radar. And when it goes out and touches somebody, it will come back to you. See, radar shoots a, a beam out, an invisible beam, and then it comes back to the machine and it registers speed, distance, uh, presence, right? And so the same beam you have that comes out of your hand, and it'll touch somebody, it'll come back to you, and you can register it through your eyes and your brain, and you'll know exactly how fast somebody's going and whether they're interested or not, okay? Are you ready? Okay, hold up your hand. Point it towards somebody. You pointing? Make sure you're pointing. We don't want it bouncing off the walls. We don't know where it's going to go. Okay, point it. Now I'm going to teach you a mantra that goes along with this that activates the beam. Hold up your hand. Come on. Are you ready for the mantra? Yes. Are you sure you're ready? Yes. I'm not convinced. Yes. Okay, hold up your hand. You ready? Yes. Hi. Beams bouncing, you can feel it taking effect. Look around the room. Can you see the presence of mind of everyone in the room? Look at it. look at what they look like. Now they're hit with the beam. And it shows that it registers. When you hold up your hand and you just say hi, you'll see anywhere you go. If you get in an elevator and there's somebody else standing in the elevator, you get on the elevator, two things you could you just look at the floor, all the twelve twelve floors going up, no contact. But if you go like hi. You hit them with the beam. They'll look back and you go, Hi, how are you? You know, where are you from? <laughs> or they'll say, Hi. <laughs> right? And then you'll know. Closed or open. You say, Hi, and they say, uh -huh. <laughs> Closed or open. They're closed, right? And, and if you say, Hi, and they say, Hi, how are you? I'm from, I'm from Iowa. Where are you from? Open or closed? Right, so you can tell by shooting your radar at anybody whether they're open or closed. Just somebody walks in the room and just says, Hi. Okay? Radar. Use your radar. It comes out of your hand. You have hand power. You're, you're powerful entities. You're part and parcel of God. God has unlimited powers, and you have powers too. Use them. Qualify. When you meet people, you can ask them a qualifying question. Where are you from? I tell people, I'm from California. Where are you from? Jai Shishi Radha Gopi Balava Ki Jai. Shishi Gorni Tai Ki Jai. Jagannath Swami Ki Jai. I'm from California. Where are you from? Houston. Houston, here. You're qualified. Have a look. We're showing this. Okay? I'm from California. Where are you from? Here. Have a look. See, it's, just ask a qualifying question. Are you from Boston? Here. You're qualified. Have a look. <laughs> are you from Boston? Here. Qualified. Have a look. So... Everyone's qualified, but they just have to know about it ahead of time. So if you qualify people ahead of time, it'll make it a lot easier on them to accept that you're showing them something valuable. The next is to trust the hand, because the hand has a specific duty, and that's to grab things. That's what it does all day long. It grabs things. So if you hold the book out like this, you watch the hand. You see that? It's a classic arc of the hand. Watch his hand very carefully. Watch. Do you see that? Now look at it on the screen. You'll see the hand doing the same thing. Hands everywhere do the same thing. See that? Arc of the hand. Hands do that. You go, here hand, and it goes, okay. Take it. So get practiced at putting the book in their hands. Sometimes um, devotees I see, they'll show the book and they'll be, you know, see? Here it is. Look at this. No, no. Let them have it. Put it in their hand. Just put it in their hand because now you've made a, a transfer from, from your hand to their hand. Trust the hand. Next is to give a nutshell presentation. All say, please repeat. Books on yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. Books on yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. Books on yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. 
books on yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. You say it and we'll repeat. Books on yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. Yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. Books on yoga and meditation that shows you how to get free from stress. Books on yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. Books on yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. Books on yoga and meditation that shows you how to get free from stress. Okay, so what this is is a nutshell presentation. I'm not saying you have to use this one, but it's a good idea to have one memorized so that if I wake you up at 1.30 in the morning and I say, what's the nutshell presentation, you'll say? And if you walk outside this uh, seminar today and people say, what did they teach you in this seminar, you'll say? That's right. And if you learn this nutshell presentation, then anytime, anywhere you go, you'll have something handy that tells people what's in it for them. As you're handing the book over, you're putting it in their hand, you'll say, books on yoga and meditation shows you how to get free from stress. It's that easy. When you're handing it over, you're telling them what's in it for them because everyone's tuned into the same radio station. That's W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? They want to know, what am I going to get out of this, right? Now, the next thing is to ask a question because the, the question mark is the most important punctuation mark in the whole English language. If you write somebody a 20-page email and you tell them, about your dog, you tell them about your house, you tell them about your joppa, you tell them about the weather. If you add one question mark in that whole 20-page email, guess what? They have to write you back, don't they? Don't they? And if they don't write you back, then next time they're going to hear about it. How come you didn't write me back? I put a question mark in that 20-page 20, 20 thing. So whoever's asking a question is leading the conversation. It's counterintuitive, but it's a fact. And if you learn to ask questions, the right questions, they're hooks. They hold on to people so that you can give them the medicine. So you've heard of stress before, right? Holds them in place. Because I'm handing the book over. Books on yoga and meditation shows how to get free from stress. They may or may not be ready to go the next point. They may have some objections, so on and so forth. But I hold them right in place. I say, you're heard of stress before, right? They're stuck. They're grabbed by the, by the hook of the question mark. It's a hook, right? I've grabbed them. They can't move anywhere. Okay, so you've heard of stress before, right? They have to answer. What's your answer? Really? Because you, sorry, you don't look stressed. What's your secret? Your eyes look spiritual. So this is the next thing. You don't look stressed. I look right in their eyes and I say, really, you don't look stressed. And it works either way because sometimes people say, no, I'm not stressed. You've heard of stress before, right? You say, no, I'm not stressed at all. Yeah, really, you don't look stressed at all. You look very peaceful. Your eyes look spiritual. So whether they say yes or no, it doesn't matter. Now, the next thing is your eyes look spiritual. Now, here's the genius behind this is that... First of all, we're bringing them to the spiritual platform and I'm bringing myself to the spiritual platform. When I look at their eyes and they say, your eyes look spiritual. Because the eyes are the windows to the soul. What is it that's looking out from the, from the eyes? The eye is just a lens. What's actually recognizing another human being, another living entity? It's the soul, right? The soul, the, the conscious soul is actually looking out and it's the most amazing thing in this world. There's nothing more amazing than this going on. If you walk around and you notice animals, people, everywhere you go, they're looking out and they're noticing things. They're conscious. They're part of this conscious spiritual world. And if you look in each person's eyes when you're talking to them and say, your eyes look spiritual, what is your secret? What that does, that question elevates them to the spiritual platform and they realize that I'm, I'm actually a spirit soul. I have a secret. I have something beyond this material body. Now, when they tell you their secret, whatever it is, that means that you and they are talking on the same platform. You're talking about this book, which is something they already know about because they have a secret about it. 
They know something that, that is intuitive to every living entity. Are you following me? You see what I'm saying? Okay, so the next thing is show and tell. Just like in school we used to have in grammar school, they'd tell us to bring in whatever it is, a pet rabbit or the hamster. I brought my hamster in once and I showed and tell the hamster, this is my hamster Pinky, and, you know, Pinky eats this kind of food and Pinky runs on a wheel and all this kind of stuff, right? You just show, show and tell. So everything that you need to sell a Bhagavad Gita is in or on the book itself. You only need to show the book. Okay, so here's some of the things that you can show. Thoreau, turn to the back cover, Thoreau, Emerson, Gandhi. They're all listed here, aren't they? Then you can add a few more. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Albert Einstein, and the Beatles. Don't forget the Beatles. We were at a door, a man from Lebanon. Wasn't it yesterday or the day before? Day before yesterday, we opened the first door we knocked on. A man from Lebanon comes out. His son, who's the brightest eyed kid I've ever seen, he was like, What is it, Daddy? I want one. Whatever it is, I want one too. <laughs> and he was like eight years old or something like that. And, and his father was a very intelligent, nice man from Lebanon. And so we were shown in the book, I was showing the back cover, and I was explaining Thoreau, Emerson, Gandhi, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Albert Einstein, the Beatles. And the kid goes, The Beatles! The Beatles! I want a book too! Give me the Beatle book, you know? <laughs> So, <laughs> Beatles have cachet. So, show them, drop some names. Drop some names. Whoever's read Bhagavad Gita, it's perfectly valid just to throw those names out there and to build some credibility in the book so people know what's there on the back cover. Just tell them. Next thing, you can turn to the front page, first page, and that is the universities. And what I do is I tell people, this book has been translated over 500 times into English, and out of all the versions this has become most popular academically. Look at this. USC, Georgetown University. They use this book. Again, dropping names of prestigious uh, institutions. Got it? Front page and the back. Drop names. Now comes to showing the pictures. Prabhupada once told Pushkar. Pushkar was in Mayapur and he, was, he lamented to Prabhupada. He's one of the artists. And he said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, everyone's going out to distribute books. I can't distribute books. I, I feel useless. Prabhupada said, the artists are the best book distributors. And look at this. Because they paint these beautiful pictures, look at this changing bodies. We say to people, look, we start here. Say this. We start here. We end up here. We're just passing through. We start here. We end up here. We're just passing through. We start here, we end up here, we're just passing through. We start here, we end up here, we're just passing through. What's our prime directive? What's our prime directive? What's our nutshell presentation? And how do you say this one? We're just passing through. Thank you very much. So just show them this picture. And then if you want to involve them, you can ask them, where are you in all this? Where are you? Where are you? Where's Manish? Yeah, and sometimes if you show a family, they're all looking and the, the guy will say, I'm here in the, in the field. No, no, Daddy, you're way over here. <laughs> and sometimes people go, well, I feel like I'm down here, you know. <laughs> Or other people say, no, I'm here, you know, the baby's body. But everyone will relate to the picture, you know, relate to the picture. The next one is related to the verse, Vidya Vinaya Sampane. That is a learned person, a pundit, sees the soul. He doesn't see the external body. A Brahman, a, a, a dog, an elephant, a dog eater, outcast. He sees them all equally because he sees the soul. So I show people this picture and I say, look, a self-realized person treats everyone with respect because he or she sees God is in everyone's heart. Do people love that? People do. <laughs> now, we come to karma. And this one, you're going to have a little fun. You've heard of karma before, right? What does it mean to you? Whoa! That's really a good way to put it. Now I'm going to ask somebody else. You've heard of karma before, right? You've heard of karma before, right? 
yes, then I'll explain what karma is. If someone says no, it's very rare that people say no. But then I'll say, well, karma means what goes around comes around, right? And they'll go, yeah, yeah, what goes around comes around. Then I'll go, whoa, that was a really good way to put it. What does karma mean to you? Whoa, that's really a good way to put it. Now, I want you to ask me what karma means to me. And as soon as I tell you anything, I want you to wind up like this and go swing your arms back and go, whoa, that was really a good way to put it. Are you ready? Okay, somebody asked me what karma means to me. Well, I don't know, you know, stuff happens and things go on. That was a really good way to put it, right? Somebody ask me again so you can try it again. Okay, ask me what karma means. You know, like, yeah, I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, good. So what happens is when, when you're asking the question, <laughs> when you ask them this question and you know you're ready to wind up and do this woe thing, you're full of energy. And when you let that energy out, they come up to this much higher level and they're ready for the, for the last part. Now, I show them this picture in the Bhagavad Gita. I say, look, man with a cow's head, cow with a man's head. Violence breeds violence. Generosity breeds generosity. Okay? Next comes a little humor. So, anybody in here work? Yes. You have a, you have a job, professional job? What do you do? What's your profession? Yeah. A yoga teacher. Look, this guy used to be a yoga teacher. <laughs> Anybody else have a job? Huh? Anybody work? What do you do? Corporate America, and you're a what kind of consultant? Actually, she's an actuarial. This guy used to be an actuarial <laughs> consultant. So when, when, I, when I come to the end, I, I ask people, so what do you do professionally? And they'll say, well, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a truck driver. Go, really? This guy used to be a truck driver. <laughs> and so half the people start laughing right away, and the other half of people say, really? And I say, no, not really. <laughs> and then they start laughing. And then I close the book, and I hand it back to them, and I say, we don't sell these like in a bookstore. Now, the reason I'm handing it back to them, because here's how it works. Hi, I'm California. Where are you from? Oh, Boston. Nice to meet you. Here, I'll show you. Books on yoga and meditation shows you how to get free from stress. You heard of stress before, right? Yeah, I, I can tell because you don't look stressed at all. Your eyes are spiritual. What's your secret? You come from a good family, right? I could tell. Here, I'll show you really quick. Now I take the book back, say, I'll show you really quick. Books on at Thoreau, Emerson, Gandhi, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Albert Einstein, the Beatles, they all read this. See, it's been translated over 500 times from the original Sanskrit, and it's become, this particular version has become the most popular academically. USC, Georgetown University, right? And here, I'll show you in a nutshell. Look it, we all start here, we end up here, we're just passing through, right? Where are you in all this? Yeah, and I'm heading down this way. I can feel it. <laughs> and look at A self-realized person treats everyone with respect because he or she sees God's in everyone's heart. You know what I mean? You know about karma? You've heard of karma? What does it mean to you? Whoa! That's really a good way to put it. Look at Here it is graphically. Man with a cow's head, cow with a man's head. You see? Violence breeds violence, generosity breeds... What do you do professionally? Software. What kind of software? C++. C++. This guy used to be a C++ software. <laughs> we don't sell it like in a bookstore, but if we did, how much do you think it would be? That's pretty close. We don't sell it. We just take a donation. So if you give a donation, you can take it with you. The only reason we ask for a donation is because when you give something in return for spiritual knowledge, it, it connects the circle, and you get a special good fortune. They cost eight to print, so anything you give over that is a donation. So at the end, after I tell the, the little joke about where do you work, then I say, um, we don't sell it. Then I'm handing the book back, you see, because initially I hand it to them, I tell them a couple things about the book, and then I say, here, I'll show you. I'll show you really quick. And I do the show and tell, and then I hand the book back to them just after they laugh, and I say, it's, we don't sell it like in a bookstore, but if we did, how much do you think it would be? 
And whatever they say, I say, that's pretty close. How much do you think it would be? That's pretty close. How much do you think it would be? That's pretty close. If they say a dollar, then I say, what, what bookshop do you shop at? <laughs> Where are you buying your books, man? <laughs> okay, and then... You know, we tell them that the reason we ask for donation is because they get this kind of special spiritual benefit to be able to read the book. And that we're spreading love of God all over the world. We're helping people suffering from ignorance. We're spreading peace and unity throughout the world. These are all um, snippets of things that you can tell people that we're doing, truthfully. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Now, after they give a donation, when they hand over a donation, then I say, do you believe in the power of prayer? And do you? You all believe in the power of prayer. Then I say, okay, I'll teach you this prayer. And I just happen to have one in my pocket. It's a mantra card. And I hand them the mantra. I say, this is a beautiful prayer from Sanskrit meant to wake up love for God in your heart. Please repeat after me. Are you ready? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. You're a natural. Okay. So then, the next thing is prashadam. Always go equipped with prashadam. You have prashadam today to pass out? Yes. Okay. So prashadam is our secret weapon. If you go to a new town and you go to open a bank account and you walk into the teller and you just open a bank account and walk away, nothing really happens significant, right? But if you go to the same teller and you open a bank account, at the end of the transaction, you hand the teller a prashadam cookie. What do you think will happen? What do you think is the difference between A and B? A, you walk in, open the account, and walk away, and you don't say anything or do anything. And B, you open an account, and you give the teller a cookie. What do you think will happen? Huh? What? The teller's on the way back home, but what will happen? Okay, so now there's some kind of connection. She'll probably, it's unusual, right? So then next time you go back and make a deposit... And you make the deposit, and then you give her another cookie. What do you think will happen the second time? Now, what will happen the third time? She'll ask for a cookie, and she'll say, who, who are you? Why do you do this? And then you can say, here, I'll show you. This is why. It's all in this book. This is about being an ambassador of goodwill. This is about you know, how to treat everyone as a special person everywhere in the world. This is about a person who hated his job, was having family problems, he wanted to walk, just hang it up and walk away. And then he heard what was in this book. And then he loved his job. He did it more expertly than before and was completely happy about life. And what did he Did he change his job? No. Did he change his clothes? No. He changed his heart. And it's all in this book. You keep this with you. You see, if you give out prashadam, that's from Sankirtan Yagya Prabhu in, in Washington, D.C. That's the line that he uses. But if you give out prashadam everywhere, it opens up the path for you to talk to people about what you're doing because it's one of the loving exchanges. It's one of the six loving exchanges given to us by Rupa Goswami. Give prashadam everywhere you go. Be the guy who always shows up with a cookie. And Prabhupada said this, if you want to make a friend, give a cookie. You want to make everyone in Boston your friend? Yes or no? Yes. Can you give everyone in Boston a cookie? Could you possibly make a campaign out of this one temple with your kitchen to make sure that everyone in Boston got a cookie? Is that possible? Yes. Possible or impossible? Possible. Then why not do it? Why not make a campaign and say, we're the temple, the one temple in ISKCON that made sure that everyone in Boston got a cookie. What do you think if you did that? Do you think people would come forward and want to donate a million dollars to help you? Yes. Probably. Probably. Some of the devotees came to me, as I told you, and said, we want to put a, a, a Bhagavad Gita in every motel room in America. And I said, go do it. Just make it happen. And what do you think is happening now? Hundreds of thousands of books are going out to motels because someone decided to do it. That's a movement. Movement means someone has got to move. Decide what you want to do and go out and do it. That's Sankirtan. Distribute prashadam. Can you get prashadam? Is it possible? Can anyone get prashadam? Can you make prashadam? Can you distribute prashadam? then make prashadam one of, the, one of your keynote processes here at, at Boston and give to everyone that you meet. Get their contact information because when we meet them the first time, that's just the first time, we want to follow up and, and give them all kinds of facility to advance in devotional service. And everyone that you meet, make sure that you take a little time to thank them for their valuable time 
and tell them what a pleasure it was to meet them. That way they'll be left with a good impression. Here's some comebacks. I already know all about this. Indians. She said it, not me. <laughs> so they say, I already know all about this, and I say, that's great, I could tell by looking at you. They say, I'm a blank, therefore I can't take the book. I'm a? An atheist, a Muslim. Okay, so here it is. Give me another book. Do I have one more book? A different one. Okay, here's how this one works. Books on yoga and meditation shows you how to get free from stress, and you say? Um, I'm a Muslim. He's a Muslim. Oh, I'm sorry, here. Here's the Muslim book. <laughs> this, was, this book's meant to wake up love for Allah. Allah is within every atom, He's within your heart, and by reading this, it wakes up love for Allah. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Madhava kifilaka. Alhamdulillah. Nahnu nu sayyad alatfal tatayam fadluk musiyad. That means give a, give a donation. So, <laughs> so whatever it is, whatever their designation, just give them the, the other one. It's like, here, take this, and he's a Buddhist now. Here, the books on yoga and meditation shows you how to get it free from stress. I'm sorry, I'm a Buddhist. Oh, Buddhist. Okay, here. Take, <laughs> take the Buddha book. This book is meant to wake up pure love for Buddha, and you can show them the picture of Buddha right in the book, and just go right on the way you're doing it. And you know what? If you have seven different books, every time they, they hand the book back, just keep taking it back. You take that one back, and you give them the next one. You can't give them the same one. Keep doing it. I had in Hong Kong, I was out with a bunch of devotees. I had about ten witnesses to this. There was a man who was like a dead stone. I showed him the first book. He just handed it back. I handed him the next one. Handed him the next one. I just kept going. And on the seventh book, he said, okay. And he pulled out his wallet and gave a donation. It's a true story. So you never know. The mind of the, of the living entity in the material world is a mysterious thing, how it's all working. And, and we just try to find an opening, how to present the Krishna consciousness. So if they have a designation that blocks them from accepting it right away, just give them a, another opening, another chance to breathe. Are you selling this? Anybody ask you that? Yes. People ask you? Yes. Are you selling this? We refuse to sell it. It's too valuable. We just take a donation. And I really emphasize that. Are you selling this? No, ask me. We refuse to sell this book. It's too valuable. We just take a donation. Their, their, their whole cadence is, is totally interrupted because they're, they're, they're thinking to say no, and they'll say, well, what do you mean no, or whatever. So we refuse to sell it. I'm with you. I hate people selling things. Don't you? We're together on this, right? Just give a donation. Okay. <laughs> How much should I donate? We try to keep it under $100. But in your case, we're thinking about making an exception. These are just uh, like little snippets, cute things that you can say. Sometimes people, you know, I'm at the door and they, they, uh, they say, okay, I'll go get a donation. And I say, as they're walking away, I say, I'll give you change if you just have hundreds or something like that. We try to keep it under $100. But in your case, we might make an exception. Ripe fruits, where it's a ripe fruit philosophy. Uh, when you go out to pick fruits, which ones do you look for? That's right. You look for the ripe fruits. And here's a profile of a ripe fruit. You see this guy at the Roth Theatre in New York? His hand's up. He's using his radar for you, too. And, and he was so nice. He bought a whole bunch of books, and he was really interested. And here's a profile of an unripe fruit. You see the guy on the right here? His finger's up, and he was preaching about how there's only one way. I don't want to go into all the details. But look at the poor brahmachari standing over here. <laughs> He's there for about 20 minutes and during this whole thing. So look at the profile. Unripe, ripe. Unripe, ripe. Ripe, unripe. So when we go out to meet people, we're looking for the ripe fruits. And if you find an unripe fruit on a tree, for instance, what do you do? You grab the fruit, don't you? You pull the fruit. You pull the branch. You break the branch off. You, dra you drag the branch down the street, right? You put it in your car at all costs. You cut the tree down if you have to, right? 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 No. No, no you, leave it on the, you leave it on the tree. So we're looking for the ripe fruits. You go out and look for the ripe fruits and you'll always be happy. Just use your radar and you'll find them everywhere you go. 
So here's a summary. We talked about our legacy. We talked about the four laws of book distribution. We talked about a few steps and how to distribute a Bhagavad Gita on its own merit. And now we'll take some reflections or questions. We've got about two minutes. Yes. Yeah. Just see. So it works everywhere. Everyone likes to have a cookie. Could you all hear that? She heard it from someone else about giving out cookies. Yeah. In New York City in the 70s, the devotees used to make thousands and thousands of lug loose. And they were individually wrapped with a little label on them. And we gave out tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of lug loose in New York City. And I remember that the New Yorkers, everywhere we go, when they'd see a devotee, they'd always ask, you know, can I have one of those? Police would pull over on their car and they'd say, hey, Krishna, you got one of them candy things? <laughs> and, and, you know, everyone knew us as the people who had prashadam. And another secret was at LaGuardia Airport, where we had to have a permit renewed every month to work the place, and there were lots of people that wanted the spot. There was this one Vaishnavi who made these cheesecakes at Govinda's restaurant, and they were beautiful. I mean, they, people would die for those. And she'd bring two of them, a cherry cheesecake and a blue, blueberry cheesecake, every month. We'd see her walk through the terminal, and she'd go to the permit office. And no one could figure out why we were always getting the permit. <laughs> And the other people weren't. And that was our secret. And you know Jayananda, who who's the great pioneer, he always took time after Rathayatra to go around to the key players in the secular world who had helped, and he always gave them a cake. He took time to give people... People love Jayananda. And one of the reasons was he was so thoughtful. He'd think to go back and give people a cake. A cake. You give somebody a cake, right? What do you think is going to happen? This R- Rakesh Oberall who's one of the biggest book distributors in the world, maybe in the history of the world, who lives in New Delhi. A few years ago, he was just getting out of school and he wasn't sure what he was going to do with his life. He comes from a very affluent family. He was sitting around in my friend's apartment in Vrindavan and he was saying, what should I do with my life? And my friend, fortunately, was a, is an avid book distributor and, and preacher and he was saying, you should dedicate your life to book distribution. So Rakesh Oberall went back to Delhi and he started a program of calling billionaires, not millionaires, billionaires. He'd look through the trades and find out where all the billionaires were and he'd just make phone calls until he'd get an appointment with one of them and he'd go in and he'd start talking to him and get all, tell him about what we're doing and at first he didn't ask him for anything but he'd find out where they live and he'd start sending cakes to their house on their birthday, their wife's birthday, cake. And after a while, they come forward and they want to know how they can help. And one of the ways they can help is giving $100,000, $200,000 each to help spread book distribution. That's one of the reasons that New Delhi Temple does so big is because of Rakesh Oberall. So giving prashadam, give a cake. Other reflections? Nirkula. Yeah, in Rancho Prime's book, um, When the Sun Shines? Where the Sun Shines? Yeah, he tells about how Prabhupada was walking down the street with some devotees, and there was a, an alcoholic sitting on the curb drinking a bottle of whiskey. And when Prabhupada came near, this alcoholic man recognized uh, a saintly person, and um, he held up his bottle, like, cheers. And Prabhupada stopped. He tapped the man's bottle with his cane, tap, tap, like that. And then he walked on and he turned to the devotees and said, this man has begun his spiritual life with this. So this is a good example of, you know, just make a connection somewhere. Sometimes uh, when you just think of it like that, let the game come to you more. You don't have to chase it so much. Let the game come to you. Yes. Um, it's, it's not about scholars. <clears throat> I mean, we, we always set goals and stuff, but it's just 
I realized that, like you know, because I used to always think about numbers. It's important, but but it's so important to just think of like I'm just giving a book. It's one book, two books, hundred books doesn't matter. It's, it's just the heart that you give it. It's so important. It's not just yeah, I mean, when you keep the bar really low for your whole congregation and and you don't put any pressure on anybody, then everyone will feel inclined to want to go out and innovate and try these things. And we've had uh, many experiences with this. One recently in Laguna Beach, California, which is a jewel of a temple, with a very... Uh, the congregation there is just uh, vibrant and beautiful and a very strong temple president. Just, you know, they can be successful at anything they want to do. So they were interested in book distribution, and they asked us to come there and talk about book distribution. And then when we gave a seminar like this, and we were talking about going out all together, and some of the devotees were nervous about going out. And I said, don't be nervous because we're not going to distribute any books. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, That's, we're not going to do any books today. No books. We're just going out. And the only goal we have is to go out together and touch the pavement. We're going out to a location, and if we can move all the troops to this one place and touch the pavement, we're done. That's it. And they said, really? And everyone relaxed. They said, we're not doing any books. Forget about it. <laughs> so we all got out there. And it's hard enough moving the troops, right? Who's in what car and where the books are and all this kind of stuff. So we all got out to the spot. And we met in that place. We took a picture there. And I said, okay, everyone touched the pavement. And we all went, touch. And I said, okay, you're done. That's it. We're finished. And they said, what do you mean we're finished? I said, well, if you want to do something extra, go ahead. But it doesn't, you know, it's, it doesn't really count. It's just we're done. And then they felt that whatever they did, it was okay. There was no expectation. So if everyone has that feeling that whatever they do is okay, then, then there's no expectation. Everyone will feel free to innovate and go out and do as much as they like, or they can just watch. And that's okay. We're going out for our own self-purification. Nice point. So now we actually are going out, and we're not going to distribute any books. We're just going to touch the pavement. And the main thing is just to, to go out and be an ambassador of goodwill, wave to people. If you meet somebody who's friendly and favorable, then engage them as far as possible, whether that includes taking a book or prashadam or friendly words, whatever it is, just do that and be a kind friend to all living beings. And then the, the whole day will be successful and the whole city will be a better place. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Gor Bhakti Vindiki jai. Gor Premanande Haribo. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Haribo.